What's up, Foot Clan, on today's episode? It's everybody's favorite. Calling your shots on those hard-to-predict players, the sleepers. Make sure you stay tuned for the whole video, and do not forget to like and subscribe and tell your friends. Enjoy the show. Hey, Foot Clan, I like uh, free stuff. Like, oh, man, free stuff? Free stuff. You is, got some free stuff? Yeah, I Let's got some free Let's talk about stuff. some free stuff. Look, we want to talk about fantasy champs, great friends of the show. I love them, too. Right now, if you need a fantasy football trophy, a fantasy football draft board, if you need a championship belt to uh, attempt to strap around your waist or throw over your shoulder and rub it in uh, that you are the fantasy champion, or if you just need to get one for your league because maybe mm -hmm. you got a brand new league and you're getting it started up and you want to get it going the right way, check out fantasychamps.com, but make sure you use the code free ring because it'll give you a free championship ring you're talking Ooh. about them 60 dollar huge championship like super bowl rings yes jason that is what i'm talking about check them out that's a good deal all right so head to fantasychamps.com and use the code free ring and you'll get a free championship ring with the purchase of any trophy or championship belt welcome to the fantasy footballers podcast with your host andy holloway Jason Moore and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. That's who we are. Judge Giamatti, Al Borland, both here as well. The full crew in studio, ready to talk fantasy, Tuesday, June 22nd. Not just fantasy. They're like Fantasy, fantasy football. Fa yes, fantasy football. No, I was going to say, this is, the, this is the stuff that people get hyped over. Sleepers. Like, calling your shot on a sleeper is it, it it's the thing it is it is the the number it's one nothing thing better it is the number one thing about fantasy football is calling your shot on a sleeper and when they hit oh baby i mean that's that's like league winning stuff because it's a sleeper there's someone that uh by definition the fantasy football community is sleeping on, and then you get an incredible player at the end of the draft. Yeah, I mean, it's great. It helps your team. And what's strange now is that there is kind of <laughs> – it, it, sleepers were <laughs> – I don't know. They were different five or six years ago. Now, sure. Now there's a number of consensus sleepers. Right, yeah. Which aren't sleepers. No, because every, everybody, knows, everybody knows, but nobody's sleeping on them. Yeah, they, they, they're just drafted where they're supposed to go. Are so, they like nappers? Yeah, they're just napping. Like they're yeah. they're lower in the ADP. They're taking a little nap. They'll wake up and everyone will grab them. Everyone's winking at each other, saying their ADP because it's really two rounds higher. Because everybody's going to try to sneak them onto their team. My, but, mine's going in the fourteenth round right now, fellas. That look, that's a sleep. Is Pretty that, much undrafted. Is that true? That is true. Okay, we have sleepers. Uh, our our early sleepers and values today. We did breakouts and busts on the last episode, but these are some of our individual picks. We'll see whether we agree with one another or not. It will be fun. Also, maybe bigger news than that. Mike's glamour shot is making yes. an appearance on Thursday. It's it is, and it is fantastic. We should I look great. We should uh give it away. <laughs> oh, is that what we're yeah. doing? We should <laughs> Mike should sign it. He should sign it and we should send it to somebody. <laughs> oh, we'll figure yeah. out what the giveaway is. Like how to enter. That's not a prize. This is going to be the that's, first giveaway oh, where it's, it's like a prize. one of the two people that enter are going that's, to win. It's, it's us saying, hey, would you throw this away for us? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, we'll pay for shipping for you to throw it away for us. Uh, YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers is where you can see it. It'll be up on the wall in place of our jersey <laughs> on Thursday's show. Then we will by then we'll figure out a giveaway, how to enter, and we'll send some unsuspecting soul unlucky that picture of mike because it's it's a little too high oh. resolution for me i'll <laughs> tell you that it's a vibe that's for sure it's, it's a vibe uh jason you've seen it i have seen it it is not only fantastic well done mike great picture it's also very large 
It will take up a, a significant portion of our wall. Or somebody's future living room. That's right. Yeah, but probably uh, maybe bedroom. <laughs> oh, who, no. who, who knows? Oh, it what? does have a vibe. Hey, you, you, once it's yours, <laughs> you, do, yours. you do whatever you want. <laughs> All right, let's talk NFL news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. I know Brooks is just... He's annoyed right now because he thought he was going to bring that thing home. <laughs> he, your Brooks already got a, a dupe of it. Yeah, well. All right, not a lot of news. A uh, little bit of hype. Henry Ruggs looks much better than he did last season, says John Gruden. Wants oh. to get more involved in the offense, not just be a decoy. That seems good. <laughs> it, it does. I mean, obviously. <laughs> who's, wait, who's, whose words were the he wants to be more involved and not a decoy? Was that was that rugs or Whose was words indeed? Or was that Gruden, the person who was in charge? Well, there was there were some decoy games for rugs due to injury last year, so he'd be back out on the field. There were also decoy games when he was not injured. Correct. That's true. <laughs> that is true. I, I've gone back and watched all of Ruggs' um, targets on the season, and it's one of those things where you you don't know what to think because he was getting open and it didn't always work out. He did, he wasn't hit, but he's got the same quarterback, so it's like. Is that going to magically be fixed or not? I still think that the the talent and opportunity is there. I'm sure we're going to talk a lot about the opportunity uh, in Oakland today. I think we all agree Ruggs fits that sleeper category yes, for does. this upcoming year as well. And um, He's a napper. Yeah, yeah. I agree like with that. right now, Henry Ruggs is a popular sleeper. He's just napping. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Everyone knows he's going to wake up. We all agree. Uh, let's, uh, talk about this young man. Sammy Watkins was quote, oh. was quote, the best receiver at minicamp. Oh. That's such bad news for so many reasons. I mean, this is, that's insulting. First of all, to the other wide receivers there, that's like bad, bad news. Um, that's not promising for the Ravens. I mean, what do you what do you take of this? Anything, or do you just water off uh, a I duck's take, back? Yeah, I take <laughs> nice. Uh, I take really nothing from it. Like Sammy Watkins, it it hasn't worked out for him for fantasy purposes and like insane production. You know, if if Sammy Watkins had been drafted in the second or the third round, the career that he has had thus far, it would be fine. But he was drafted where he was uh very very high in the first round but like I don't think Sammy Watkins is bad you know, like so this is not news to me it's oh Sammy Watkins veteran wide receiver who has been paid a lot of money to be a good wide receiver in the NFL is the the best player like Hollywood Brown is he does what he does but that's fine and Rashad Bateman is a rookie I mean but like what like a week ago it wasn't it Duvernay was getting the hype out of the Baltimore camp it's it's whatever to me. When we had our mock draft show and we were talking about Lamar, I brought up Sammy because he helps Lamar Jackson. Yes. I mean, if it's help or hurt, I think we all agree he he may not be consistent. He may not be a fantasy option. He may not be a bunch of things we thought he would be, but he was still better to have on the field for Patrick Mahomes than not being on the field, and he's still better to be on the field for Lamar Jackson. So yeah. him being the best receiver at minicamp, I'm not surprised Sammy Watkins is dominating the part of the year where he can't score you fantasy points. But is there any chance he's the the clear one for this team? Is is that in the range of yeah. possible outcome where he should be a sleeper in fantasy? No. no. Okay. Good. No. Glad like I mean, like ambient sleeper. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, I mean like, like, good night. You're, if you're, you're gonna you're, wake up feeling <laughs> real sleepy <laughs> if you time this poorly, then <laughs> you're just lights you're, out. Yeah, you're gonna be waking up. And it's gonna be mid afternoon. But no, the, it's Mark Andrews, Lamar Jackson. I, I think Lamar is going to be incredible for fantasy this year, but he's not going to sustain multiple passing options for fantasy football. It's just, I don't think that's in the cards. All right. That was today's news and notes brought to you by our friends at sleeper. Make sure you switch your league to the fastest growing fantasy platform today. Definitely check sleeper out on that note. Mm hmm. Let's talk sleepers. Sleepers. Nice. Very nice. 
All right. Uh, we have a number of consensus sleeper picks inside the Ultimate Draft Kit and the UDK Plus. You can check those out at ultimatedraftkit.com. Today's show is about kind of our individual picks um, and some other names that we think have the possibility of emerging or being valuable and are basically undrafted players or late, late round players uh, that aren't being talked about that, you know, we each have different opinions on. So, Mike, I will let you kick this oh. thing off. All right. Well, I wanna... If you're ready. I oh, mean, I'm, if you I'm... have somebody. I am here and I am prepared. I knew we were doing a show about sleepers, so. Oh, I, that's good news. I got one ready for you. I want to talk about the Las Vegas Raiders, but no, I am not going to talk about their former first-round pick. Or not former. He's still on the team, but a couple years ago, first-round pick. I want to talk about their new free agent. I want to talk about John Brown. Smoke. Because people are – there's a little bit of chatter every once in a while on the social media platforms, but – I want to surface his name as someone who is going in the, the double-digit round, wide receiver 57 currently, and I think that John Brown still has it. I think that John Brown can be a contributor. That was a contributor. That's a new, that's a new word. Look, we're, we're, we're getting there. To your fantasy football team. Last a, tri- year, a tributary. Yeah. Uh, sure, sure. <laughs> Last year, Nelson Aguilar, he helped you out. It was very boom bust, but there were several re- weeks where you were very happy that Nelson was in your lineup. And last year, John Brown opened the season back to back top fifteen performances. Then, unfortunately, he got hurt. He had a calf injury, and that calf injury ended up lingering and turned into a knee injury. But over the final three appearances of the regular season, of his final three appearances, I should say, he averaged. 81 yards a game. John Brown still had it, and that was while competing with their newest number one wide receiver, Stephon Diggs. Look at the other players on the Raiders' depth chart. Ruggs, okay, it it certainly is possible, but Renfro, Brian Edwards, I mean, these are guys that are not going to be challenging for John Brown to overtake on the depth chart and become someone that, that Derek Carr might choose to be his the, the number one wide receiver for this team. He is the instant vet. He is probably the best wide receiver on the team and if you look at what happened last year with Nelson Aguilar coming in and basically saying I'm the vet I'm the best wide receiver currently on the team and and if you had to say who's better John Brown or Nelson Aguilar I think John Brown is a much better wide receiver my concern with Brown is just will he be healthy will he be able to that is a big concern yes he hasn't yeah I don't don't know if he's better or worse than Aguilar but bringing Aguilar up is important and I think you know me I'm a Derek Carr apologist Yes, you are. In terms of like him being undervalued as an NFL quarterback. And part of the ammo to this argument for you, in my opinion, is if you look last year, uh, the highest adjusted adjusted completion percentage on 20-plus yard throws in all of football, every single quarterback, Derek Carr's number one. And what does John Brown do well? He does that very well. His his yards per catch a couple years ago was up at 17. He's normally around 15. And he is the veteran. He's somebody that, you know, I think what we saw with Derek Carr is that if you could do it, he's going to go back to you over and over again, whether that was Darren Waller or once Aguilar kind of, oh, you're the guy I'm going to throw the ball deep to. People don't recognize the fact that Derek Carr is is pretty good at throwing down the field. And so there is the possibility. Again, it's health is a problem. I don't really view John Brown and Sammy Watkins very differently from each other for fantasy production at the NFL level. There's just like – it's been very hard to get anything reliable from them, but it doesn't make them any less talented. It's just that's been the predictability problem. And when you're in those late rounds, look, you have to – you're going to use your draft pick. You're going to call your shot. You're going to go get a lotto scratcher for your fantasy football team. Guys who are going around John Brown uh, in sleepers ADP, Sterling Shepard, Darius Slayton, Denzel Mims, McCole Hardman, these are all guys who – look, those are fine players – those players, though, have a 0.0% chance to be the number one passing option for their team where I'm, I'm, not, I'm not proclaiming John Brown for sure. He's, he's coming into town. He's the best. He's going to take over. Like I'm, but I'm saying there is an actual percentage chance that John Brown could do that. Oh, there's a high I, – I would, I would say it's the majority. I would say the, the odds are that he will – come in to be the one that role for the team. I'd put it just over 50%, somewhere around. 
<laughs> Nicely done. Just me personally. Um, speaking of me personally, I'll go with my sleeper next. Like I said, he's going in the 14th round. This guy is pretty much undrafted. He is a tight end, and the currently the tight end 23 okay. off the board. Okay. So um, this is a free player you could take a shot at. And I he he you know you when when you're trying to build your sleepers, when you're trying to build your late round draft picks, there are certain markers you look for, certain opportunities or talents or traits where you go. These things have hit in the past with other players, and so I'm going to look for those and. Gerald Everett, tight end, now with the Seattle Seahawks this year. He checks a lot of those boxes for me. He's very talented, very athletic. That's something that's always He's super athletic. We've always spoken about that with him, you know, Mount Everett. Um, <laughs> I he don't was, think we ever you, said that. No, if we called him Mount Everett, but what, what were those we never Everett. Mount, Ev Mount Everett? <laughs> no, yeah, no, that's his new nickname. Oh, gross! Mount no, Everett. It's Mount Everett. And well, no, you can't climb Mount Everett. You can climb Mount Everett. <laughs> Anyways, um, here's the thing: he's got the talent oh, and the athleticism. No. He was, you know, the 44th overall draft pick of 2017. If you remember, Sean McVay's first ever draft pick. Yes. Um, you know, he's he's a very Athletic guy, ninety first percentile, college dominated rating. I, this this argument for Gerald Everett it's, sounds like one Thank that you. I've made, <laughs> right? Four years in a you, row. Yes, because there there are those markers. But I love you, Gerald. Please do something. But here's why I'm saying I think he's a good sleeper pick for 2021, because a lot of times tight ends need time and they need that change of scenery we saw it with like greg olson ironically who just left this team ironically also who's these arguments were made for greg olson last year in seattle too um and but will disley has done it before but you saw he wasn't the same after that achilles greg olson is gone and now you've got gerald everett playing with a quarterback who can throw a ton of touchdowns and yeah i mean the, the those arguments existed for greg olson but you saw greg olson on the field last year he looked like he was a, gone then. He looked like a sports commentator because that's what he is now. He is a sports commentator, whereas Gerald Everett is a prime of his career age-wise for tight end. Um, and, and there's more to it than this. This is a team that pursued Gerald Everett in free agency. Remember week five last year when he went off 136 yards on 11 targets against Seattle. They went out and pursued him. And do you know who their offensive coordinator is now? Well, it was the Greg tight end. Olson. It was the tight end coach for the Rams. It was the Rams passing attack coordinator. They brought him in and they say right now that Gerald Everett knows the offense the best, inside and out. He is completely familiar with the offense being installed. And a couple of days ago, Pete Carroll went on radio and when he was asked, "Who is this year's player that you think has the best potential to break out?" He didn't skip a beat. He said Gerald Everett is going to be great. And here's the thing. He said, and I quote, fanciest that's what he called him he fanciest? said Everett is the fanciest sweetest looking receiver tight end mix that we've ever had like pinkies up fancy soups fancy like, we're talking bow ties dabs monocles soups fancy he's had you know Jimmy Graham before tuxedos I mean if the coach is calling him fancy you know it's pretty much a home run but my point it all, does make me like him a little bit more all jokes yeah right <laughs> all jokes aside the head coach sees it. He's calling it. He's saying he's great. He says he's one of the best tight ends that he's, they've ever had. He's coming with the offensive passing coordinator from his former team, sign him free agency, athletic, and he's got a quarterback that could throw a ton of touchdowns. Look at Robert Tunyon last year, right? Mm -hmm. He was the, the tight end three. Why? Because he just caught a bunch of touchdowns. That's how tight ends happen. Yeah, Give me it, Russell Wilson. Uh, and it's, it's a good argument. And obviously, the argument against any of these sleepers is going to be significant. Otherwise, they wouldn't be drafted or undrafted, you know, drafted yeah. late or undrafted. If everybody agreed that they were going to be, you know, hits, they wouldn't ah, be here. Man, I can't wait to tear down your argument for the tight end 23. Yeah. <laughs> what uh, an idiot you are. All right, let me let me uh, jump in real quick. I'll give you my sleeper pick. If, if it was Jason sitting in this seat, he would begin the argument with the drafted to be great moniker. But I just it, – it's – I'm perplexed by this guy. I can't believe you're going. Uh, uh, we're we're aboard this sleeper pick. Yeah, Jason and I, I can speak for Jason here. Yes, you can. And when we were talking about in the office of like, look, man, are you know we're feeling this, and Andy's like, yeah, I, 
I've been down that road so many times. So the fact that you got back in this car. I love it. And you're driving down the road. This is this is a rental. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm in the car, but I'm giving the keys over to somebody else. You're ready to tuck and roll? Yeah, man. I'm not going to go down this road in a long time. <laughs> this is a ride someone else can take because the I just don't understand how it's not the case. And it's Mike Williams. I'll reveal. Yes. Mike Williams, wide receiver for the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, when when Teddy Bridgewater goes out and supplies fantasy value to three wide receivers in Carolina, and then you stare down the Chargers and what they have in, with Justin Herbert, mm -hmm. and you look at what Keenan Allen represents, possession receiver, not a touchdown guy, and then you go look at this absolute mammoth of a man, Mike Williams on the other side, you, you shake your head and say, how does this not happen? And, I mean, he is a dunce of a consistent fantasy player. He has not done it. He had his, his 10 touchdown year in 2018. Last year, he had four games as a top 14 wide receiver when, for some reason, it all works out. Two as the wide receiver 37 and the rest were wide receiver 47 or worse. So it was a disaster. But Mike Williams is, as of the beginning of, of the season, going to line up across the field from Keenan Allen for an up-and-coming quarterback. He has the draft pedigree and the talent and the size and the strength and the ability to go out and put up a 10-touchdown type of season, and he is being 100% ignored in drafts. So I think you could do a lot worse as a – you know, just see what happens to start the year. Maybe he's learned how to come down with the ball – without crumpling or hitting, oh, no, hitting the ground. Not. He hits the ground like he weighs 650 pounds. He has no regard for his life. He has <laughs> no fear when he goes in the air, which is great if until all the, you need to end. do is catch one ball. <laughs> like if you gotta if you gotta have someone go up and get that one ball this season, let it be Mike Williams, but then he has to crash back down to the ground. And, and the funny thing is is that it, if you're looking for a one week start, maybe that maybe he's not even drafted by you. Or maybe you take the shot that he has an emerging year. But if you look for a one week start, you can do a lot worse than uh the wide receiver who has the highest percentage of twenty plus yard targets of any other wide receiver in football. Like they're going to take shots down the field with mm -hmm. him. If he doesn't break during the game, you have a chance of having big games. I mean, four games inside the top fourteen. Those are like weak winning wide receiver one game. Remember, he got injured early on last year. I don't, no. Uh, you, no, 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 <laughs> not not like fall down and get a big injury. I'm talking in camp. Remember that? Yeah. Yes, oh, yes, yes. And yeah, he started on, uh, hard knocks. The, yes, and he started the season kind of like really um, not at full strength, but historically, it is so common for a team to have multiple wide receivers in the top 24. There are plenty of teams out there in the NFL that will not have a top 24 wide receiver this season in fantasy, and there are plenty of teams that will have multiple top 24s. You, this is a guarantee, uh, you know, if, if they're all healthy, that Mike Williams is the number two wide receiver for this team, and it's a great quarterback. So, again, that's like you're just looking for boxes to be checked when you're drafting that late, and I, I love this pick, Andy. And, oh, well, and historically, you. You, you know that a rookie quarterback is not going to su sustain fantasy value for multiple pass catchers, and it was it, it's going to be Keenan Allen. He, Keenan Allen is the number one guy on the team, so the fact that it's Herbert going into the second year, I think your odds of Mike Williams – returning fantasy football value it's it's much higher than it was this past year before we move into our value picks want to thank today's sponsor away away is a modern lifestyle brand that creates thoughtful products for every traveler and every kind of trip they started with the perfect suitcase crafted with features that make travel more seamless and now when travel looks more different than ever before you can count on away's range of suitcases bags and accessories whenever you need to take the next trip. It is not a joke. They're we, great. We all have an away bag. Yeah. I uh, it's it's weird to like really like your suitcase. I know that if if you've never I, experienced that, yeah, I get it, it sounds bizarre. But I love it. I love my away bag. The the four the three hundred sixty degree spinner wheels guarantee the smoothest roll even through the most hectic of airports and stations. It matters, man. You're you're Getting through the airport, you got places to be. You need to make sure your bag's not falling all over the place, tipping over. It's smooth, man. This thing, this thing just glides over the ground. They have the TSA-approved combination lock to keep all your belongings safe. 
Uh, there's a hundred day trial because Away stands behind their product. You got a, a they're designed to last a lifetime. So if any part of the suitcase breaks, Away standout customer service team will arrange to have it fixed or replaced. Start your 100 day trial and shop the entire Away lineup of travel essentials, including their best selling suitcases at awaytravel.com slash footballers. That's awaytravel.com slash footballers. And look, whether it's for work or for play, a lot of us going to be moving on the on the go this year, traveling. My advice to you, take your Raycons with you. I'm going to the beach uh, in a couple of weeks here, and I plan to be scootering down the ocean side with Raycons in my ears. Scootering? Oh, yeah. You rent the scooters, the oh, wind in your face. I thought that's what you called like you running on the beach. No, but I mean, look, we all have Raycons. They're great. Whether it's, you know, a news podcast, you want to listen to an audio book, you power through a workout, you get crisp, powerful beats. And here's the best part. It's like half the price of other premium audio brands. Raycons, yes. they look good. They sound good. They are such a nice way to get into you know a, a, a good audio product that is wireless that you could take with you and it's got an awesome 24-hour battery the battery is uh, unbelievable so listen up right now raycon's offering 15 percent off all their products for the foot clan and here's what you got to do to get it you go to buyraycon.com slash footballers there you'll get 15 percent off your entire raycon order and it's such a good deal you'll you'll want to grab another pair you know what I mean? It's yeah, oh, I know. And, and save. But that's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash footballers. Values. I thought you meant one of those mobility scooters. Oh, and he's going oh, like three, uh, three like miles. A, a rascal? Yeah, like three miles an hour down the boardwalk on one of those. Soon, soon. <laughs> I've got a couple more years left, though, of the two-wheel scooter, and then I will graduate to, to the, the rascal. Uh, but I will be, you know, taking out the governor. I want, I want one of those. Like, He's taking the governor's off. You're darn right. I've seen them. I've seen the the elderly people with the those way look, crazy carts that are go flying thirty they, miles an hour down the sidewalk. So they build those, and they can actually go faster. But they're putting. Speed reduction onto that machine. I doubt it. I'll bet you got to soup the motor up <laughs> yeah, versus okay. take the that governor off. That makes more sense to me. Do you think there's a community of the elderly all wearing like leather jackets and cruising around in non-governed mobility scooters? Probably, yeah, like denim cutoffs. There's got to be at least one small community somewhere, yeah. and they're all wearing the the giant sunglasses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course they're out there. They're there's, so cool. Got the Raycons. <laughs> all right, we are looking at value picks. Who wants to go first? I'll jump in here first since that seems to be the order that we are going Fine. in. Uh, I took this fellow. You really like this guy. I do. Well, the, the price is incredible. As a person, though. Uh, you, it's, uh, uh, it's pretty good value, look, though, we've, for fantasy. Like a role model. We've had some good times in fantasy football. Yeah, you have. Antonio Brown and I. Uh, and he is going in the double-digit rounds. Like I, I talked about the sleeper Not if of, you keep talking Brown. about him. Well, well I'm, try I'm here for the people. I can't control things like Adam Troutman's ADP. But Antonio Brown uh, being drafted on a sleeper as the wide receiver, 48. You want volume. In, in fantasy football, volume is king. And the fact that you can get Antonio Brown this late, and you, you know who Antonio Brown is as a football player. You, the question of his skill has been answered repeatedly, over and over. And here's what happened last year. Antonio Brown joined the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He started in week nine. Reminder, off the street. This is Antonio Brown just getting up off the couch and joining the now Super Bowl winning Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He was a wide receiver three or better in five of his eight games. He was a top ten wide receiver twice, two times in the final three weeks. And in those eight games, all the wide receivers were healthy. This wasn't like... Godwin was out, so Antonio Brown filled in. And it, with the one caveat, Mike Evans did leave Week 17 early. But for the most part, all three wide receivers were there and ready to go. And in that time, Antonio Brown pulled in a 20% target share. He pulled in 22% of the wide receiver receptions. He had a higher target and reception percentage than Chris Godwin. This was off the street. And then, uh, then of course, built into that is should Mike Evans or Chris Godwin miss some time, Antonio Brown immediately jumps up and is incredible. I, 
I'm not proclaiming that that Brown is going to overtake you know Chris Godwin and be the actual wide receiver two on this team when everyone's healthy. I don't think that's the case at all. I think he is the three, but that wide receiver three is still going to see an incredible target share. He's he's playing with a quarterback that is very likely to to uh, hit that forty t- touchdown threshold or at least be very close to it, and that type of volume in the later rounds is just absurd. And then, of course, built in, Antonio Brown can be a league-winning type of a player. He still has that ability should they call upon him for that. So the fact that he's going in the double-digit rounds just makes absolutely no sense to me. I think you see this on teams with multiple talented options of wide receiver. It's like really hard to invest in an option that is the lowest of the ADPs. But you are investing nothing at this yeah. point. No, you're not. You're not investing much at all, and you, you have some upside. But do you have the confidence to play him every week? That's the part where people get have a hard time with it. Or a pathway to something greater. Like, would you say that there's a – like, the ceiling for Antonio Brown is not the old ceiling. No, 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 no. it's not. But, I mean, when I, when I look at values, when I'm deciding what a value is, to me, those aren't people that can break out and necessarily be – top five at their position it's just someone that is like why are they going so late yeah. we know what we have in Antonio Brown a really good NFL wide receiver who's going to be part of a very good passing attack who got the job done last year and will get the job done this year um, he's a guy that you can absolutely plug in your wide receiver spot or your flex and he's going in the 11th round yeah. there are plenty of players going way ahead of him that I you're hoping something happens but otherwise it's just cut bait and he's waiver wire fodder like I said he was a top 36 wide receiver in five of his eight games like in the 11th round yeah someone who's more often than not at top 36 that's that's insanity yeah he's that's not really going to be cut receiver. you can always put him in your lineup yes yeah. I like it um so here's my value my value is requires one word of explanation Julio <laughs> it's not Julio Jones it's the guy that is benefiting from Julio Jones, oh, Ryan. I, I drafted Tannehill. him too in that mock draft. Oh, good job! Uh, I did compliment you when you did that. You did. Um, yeah, Ryan Tannehill is an excellent value right now. He's going in the tenth round as the thirteenth quarterback off the board. Nobody really loves Ryan Tannehill, like his mom. But like nobody really loves. Like man, dude, I left the draft. I got Ryan Tannehill in your face. His you know? mom actually drafted Justin Herbert. Right. I don't. I mean. More upside, better hair. There's a <laughs> lot of reasons. But um, here's the truth with Ryan Tannehill. He's been outstanding. Yes. He finished as the quarterback seven last year. But remember, he basically didn't have A.J. Brown for the first three games. They had the week four bye. From week five on, when they got back after their bye, and he had A.J. Brown, he was the quarterback two for fantasy football. Like, not a quarterback two, the quarterback. He was the second best fantasy quarterback that's great and you say well that's you know it's a small sample it's this how about the year before when he took over mm -hmm. after Marcus Mariota and once he was a starter was the quarterback three for fantasy football so this is a guy who two years ago once he got the start was the quarterback three in fantasy last year when he had his uh, main wide receiver which was the vast majority of the season was the quarterback two and now you add Julio Jones? Yeah. Like, the upside is actually the quarterback one. I wouldn't project that. But when you're getting a guy in the 10th round, like I told you, I love Kyler Murray. In the mock draft, I drafted him in the fifth. Feel great about it. But I was like, man, if I could have had a great wide receiver running back there and then added Tannehill in the double-digit rounds, and it turns out I get pretty close to the same amount of fantasy points at the end of the year – I just think he's a screaming value right now in these drafts. Yeah, I mean, you make a very compelling case. I will throw in one caveat with Tannehill. The ride is not always – like, you hope Julio fixes the problem with Tannehill because eight of 16 games last season, he was outside the top 12 at the position, which is means you're losing at the position against somebody else in your league. Yeah, he has yet the big – still like, managed to finish as – the quarterback, too, in that stretch. Yeah, a lot of times has the big, weak winning yep. performance. But one thing that I think we need to look into a little bit more, I've been researching it, and it seems like consistency is one of the least consistent <laughs> metrics. As in, <gasps> if you look the year prior when he w had that quarterback three run, 
he was one of the most consistent. Only had one single game outside of the top uh, 12. Well, I guess he was at 13, so two. Two, but one barely. So, like, he... I think it's just one of those things where you bet on talent, you bet on an offense, and the consistency is going to come. I think 11 games in the top six in that two-season stretch, which are weak winning type of performances from him. And Julio, greater sign Corey Davis. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's it's it it's, kind of blows your mind when you give the numbers of the finish of number three and then number two. Obviously, they're caveated by the A.J. Brown absence and stuff, but if you do have injury, if you do have somebody go down, Julio's there to help. Yeah. I mean, it was funny because you, you rewind the tape a month ago, and it was like, man, this, this team is one injury away from just a just a catastrophe. You lose Corey Davis, you lose John U. Smith, and now it's like Josh Reynolds and Julio Jones are way better. So what holds you back from ranking in that way? Um, I think what holds me if back from, that rank, high. from ranking him that way, ranking him as a top five guy, is almost more about the other quarterbacks than it is about him. I think he absolutely has the ability to finish there, but when I compare him versus Dak Prescott or right. these other players, I just I see more ability for them to be great. But that doesn't necessarily like if there were you know right now let's say it's Dalvin Cook and CMC at running back, right? They're the best two, right? And so there's a little tier break there. Well, if there were eight, if there just so happened to be eight great tier one running backs, then it it doesn't mean that the eighth player is bad. It just means that they're all great. And I think that that's kind of more how I see the quarterback position right now. All right. My value pick, I don't think Jason likes him at all. But I'm going to go with Debo Samuel here. You are correct. Yeah. He's the wide receiver 35 off the board right now. And the reason I like Debo is because he's going two rounds behind Brandon Ayuk. Uh, when this is a make or break season for Debo Samuel. Ooh, don't say break. I know it, it's literally <laughs> oh. a make or break season for Debo Samuel. He has to stay healthy. But the facts for fantasy players is that when he's healthy, he's great. When he's on the field, he's playing more than seventy percent of snaps. He's been double digits in eleven of the past thirteen games. 85% of the time he's putting up double digits. He's an A consistency in our uh, player profiles, but we know the story. He missed the first three games of last year after suffering a Jones fracture in his foot. Then he suffered a strained hamstring. He aggravated it again later in the year, um, which could have all stemmed from that Jones injury where he's just trying to, you know, he couldn't train optimally in the off season. There were issues um, entering 2021. He's fully recovered. That's where we stand with him. And I still have the conviction and belief that he is the number one wide receiver option in that scheme. Brandon Ayuk is very good. He's very talented. I could see them being 1A, 1B, and both having great seasons. But one of them is two rounds later than the other one. Um, Shanahan's come out and said he needs those guys to be healthy. Ayuk has helped, dealt with injuries, too. It's yep. not just been Debo. Um in fact, it was, it was crazy. I was looking back at to some of Shanahan's comments with Ayuk last year. It was like Ayuk's best fantasy day. Shanahan came out and he's like, he took a step backwards as a wide receiver today. We need a lot better from him. It's so like he, he ex I mean, between what he's done with Pettis and then what he's done with those comments, he expects a lot from his wide receivers. Um, I think he's the patience is going to run out on the injury front for Debo if he gets hurt. But he's a player you can draft in the eighth round and play him until he gets hurt doesn't cost you a lot in the draft um so that i just think when those two guys are so similar you take the better value in the draft yeah i think you're right there um you know if, if both players play 17 games who is the better fantasy option i don't know it's it's, right. it's, it's dead That's even fair. so why not take the guy a couple rounds later i agree with that mentality completely i'm just a complete not, not, You're I'm not willing skeptic. to be wrong on Debo? I'm, yes, he's one of those where it's like, I'm willing to take the L when I bypass him at any cost because he'll play 17 and he'll be great. And I'll say, well, good for you, Debo. I did not think you could stay healthy. And he has, he also has the, the rookie quarterback variable of <clears throat> it, maybe Garoppolo starts the whole year. I, I don't see it happening that way. Uh, to me, you, when you trade 
that many future first round picks to move up to the, to the the number three spot, that that player is going to get in sooner than later. Uh, and if if Trey Lance takes over, now you have to compete for a rookie's targets with not only Ayuk but you have George Kittle as well. So it, it, there's I like Debo the player a lot, but there are it, there are some red flags for me. Can I change your mind? No, you're oh yeah. Mind. I did forget about that. Ah, oh, Debo. <laughs> I, I miss Debo being good. He he he's so much fun to watch when he's healthy. The way that he plays I was out say there. He's wonderful to have on your roster when he's I, healthy. I mean, you want to talk about a guy playing with reckless abandon? It's Debo. But you want to talk about a guy who should not play with reckless abandon? It's, <laughs> it's Debo. Because it's not just the, like, oh, his NFL career has been injured. He was super injured all through college. And super injured all through high school. So he's one of those guys. Like, I always want to remember the he, Frank he Gores. He did play 15 of 16 games in his rookie season. Yeah. Including a, a really impressive finish to that year, if you remember from week eight yes. on. Oh, my goodness, if yes. You, if you kind of decide that he's injury prone, you're going to avoid him. If you decide that last year was about the Jones fracture and never being right, you can throw last year out and say, hey, he's 25, he's a great athlete. Shanahan's smart. They get him the ball in short area space and let him go to work, and now he's fully recovered. And then you can take a renewed chance. At Almost him. every doctor that I follow, who you know is is participates in fantasy football, they hate the injury prone label. They say there is no such thing as injury prone. Right, it's a way to take advantage. So if you you know, and I and I say. Have you Hogwash. seen <laughs> <laughs> Show them a picture of certain guys, and I go, well, you can have them. All right, let's get into some mailbag. Bag. All right, if you have a question for us, we love helping you out. Go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, click the submit a question button, or Jason, you can dial the voicemail hotline, 302 464 TFFB. I'm sure you're glad I didn't make you recite that. I've got it in front of me. Okay, that makes it easier. Let's jump into a voicemail. Hey guys, I got a dynasty question here for you and a super flex. Are you looking to move Aaron Rodgers for a first next year? Just want to make sure that you're not left holding the bag in case he actually just retires. Thanks. Love the show. Oh, brother. That's an easy no for me. I will hold the bag. I will be – it's one of those just like with Debo. Okay. You got to just take your shot because obviously if he just straight up retires, it's bad advice. <laughs> you know, like you – I lost the bet. But it's a super flex league, and uh, you know his value is incredible. I don't think he's going to retire and stay retired forever. I think you've got a couple more years of Aaron Rodgers left playing somewhere. And if I'm wrong about that, I'm willing to take that bet. I would say even if he actually – like the culmination of this is we get into August and, and Aaron Rodgers says, no, I'm, I've retired. I'm not going to play for, for the Green Bay Packers. I have retired. I would probably try to trade for Aaron Rodgers in a super flex because, as we know from the person before Aaron Rodgers in Brett Favre, you can retire and unretire many times, and the retirement is a pretty good way to have a team rescind your rights or trade you away. And I mean, Favre did that twice. What if it was the first pick in 2022? No, not Rodgers. He I th I think then it, 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 it then it is a little bit more appetizing because you're going to trade him for what has a much higher hit rate of being an impact player and probably another quarterback. It, it'll be very young. Yeah. Uh, so I I would be open to that, but you just won't know that now. You'd have to do that at you know. I mean that's impossible. Yeah. Yeah. It is. All right. Uh, Dynasty trade question uh, from the website Griffin in Chicopee, Massachusetts. Oh, Chicopee. It's a great name. That's a fun name. I have Aaron Jones on my team. Should I trade Darnell Mooney for A.J. Dillon? That is who the A.J. Dillon manager is asking yes. for. Yes. I Even mean. if you don't have Aaron Jones on your team, and, and I, I know Andy's been rising on Darnell Mooney, and I have no problem with the player, but I would trade him for A.J. Dillon, yes. I would as well. Either way, but definitely if I've got Aaron Jones. I would do this if you had Aaron Jones. I would not do it otherwise. Um. I don't think the path for Dylan is clear, but you need him if you have Aaron Jones. Yep. All right. Uh, Teddy in Pennsylvania says, which side do you prefer, CMC or J.K. Dobbins and Terry McLaurin? This is oh. a dynasty league. 
10 team half PPR. Oh, man. Christian McCaffrey or Dobbins and Terry? I think I'm supposed, I think I, my instinct wants to answer Dobbins and McLaurin. Oh, really? My instinct is CMC only because if you're going to trade CMC, you can get more, I believe, than Dobbins and McLaurin. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I mean. So do your shopping. Yeah, I would, I would shop around and see what the best you can get is, but I, I lean towards the CMC side. Um, where, where are you? Standing? I don't think that's a, I know you, maybe you could get more for McCaffrey. That's not a bad haul. Like, like McLaurin uh, is the linchpin of that deal. Yes. Mc, McLaurin is, I mean, a, at, at, even if you're down on McLaurin, you would think you still have to view him as a top 15 dynasty wide receiver at this point. And we're all a little bit lower on Dobbins, but Dobbins is still v very young and very solid for fantasy football. You're playing uh, with fire on the timing of trading CMC. Like, I don't think the time is now. I agree with that. But at some point, you won't get a haul for CMC. Yeah. So yeah. it's just a matter of End I would of shop season? the deal, see the best thing you could get if you want to trade him. Yeah, that man, that is a brutal one. I But now working through it a bit more, I think I'm with Jason. I'd rather have McCaffrey. Uh, Instagram. Important question here. If you guys ever need a water boy at the studio, please reach out. This is from uh, Bobby T8 Ton Kennedy. Oh, okay. Sorry. I was really hoping it was Bobby. Oh, Bobby what? B. Well, if uh, Brooks would probably fight you. Is he the current water boy? Brooks is definitely the current water boy. Yeah. How do you How do you feel about that, Brooksy? I embrace my role. Mm -hmm. See, whatever you need. That's yeah. right. He's the richest water boy I know. <laughs> richest water boy anyone knows. Well, yeah. it's like yeah. I mean, when you're that wealthy. What, what, else? Yeah. what else is there to do? And so you start taking those random jobs like that, that feel lower level, like a water boy. Yeah, which is, but it's a very important job here in Arizona. We'd, yes. be, we'd be dead. We would dehydrate in approximately 30 minutes. Yeah. He has to sponge us down yeah. throughout yeah. the day. Yeah, the sponge bath. Which is, it's awkward, but necessary. Very necessary. <laughs> I sweat a lot. You sweat it all weekend. Oh, my God. You want to tell that story? Uh, yeah, I went to a staycation. Ah. Uh, you know, those are those wonderful things where you yeah. go to like a resort nearby your house and mm -hmm. you just kick back and you, you, you eat at fancy restaurants, you go to the pool. You know, you just have a good time because it's Father's Day weekend. Sounds cool. Uh, shout out to the Fairmont uh, Princess <laughs> for Whoa. sucking so Whoa. much. Whoa, what are we doing here? I'm getting my money back. That's what I'm doing <laughs> because I, I went from <laughs> building to building to restaurant to area to lobby. <laughs> And it was 100 degrees inside everywhere. That's what it felt like. This You're, has never been done. This has never it's been fine. done. But I'm just. <laughs> this I'm, man is sweating. I'm, I'm straight up be. telling you. It was. I mean, cool your property down. This was not. And this wasn't just the case of me being fat. Because I know I'm fat. <laughs> but everybody in there was sweating. The, the, I felt bad for the staff. They're walking around just beads sweating out. I'm like, you're inside. This is not. This is not like by the by the pool. I expect it to be hot. That's it's Arizona inside. Cool your facilities. Shame on you. So you had a good time? No, I had a terrible time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Not expected. Okay. We want to uh, close things down here and thank Pristine Auction. They have a signed Travis Kelsey football right now, $26. Up on the website. It ends on Wednesday night. Justin Jefferson signed logo football. I don't know if you saw that story. He, ever since Patrick Peterson showed up at, at uh, OTA's, Jefferson will not match up with anybody else. He only wants oh. to match up with Peterson. and so, so he could feel good about yeah, himself. Yeah, why is he picking on <laughs> the old own, guy? And own his craft. <laughs> uh, signed football, 20 bucks ends Wednesday night. There are hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. Check them out. PristineAuction.com. And don't forget to use the code BALLERS. That's going to do it for us. We have a mailbag show coming up. Mike's Glamour Shot on Thursday and a oh, whole yeah. lot more. Jason's going to try to cool down before then. We'll see. If he's successful. Yeah, because I'm going to my house <laughs> where I can cool it down. <laughs> Goodbye, Foot Clan. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. <laughs>